starting this adventure at Bongate House in Appleby. Exceedingly motorbike friendly and I'll just give you a quick look where you can park your bike safely. Look at that hard standing. But find out more about them in the guide. Now Bongate House itself is right on the edge of Appleby so it's beautifully located on what was once the ancient capital of Westmoreland. There was Westmoreland and Cumberland before Cumbria and Appleby was the ancient capital. And we'll have a quick look in because also this was famous well it is famous for Appleby Horse Fair which is at the first weekend in June generally thousands of travellers come from all over Europe and congregate here a hundreds of years old tradition but Appleby is only a very small town but as you go through you go up this little bank and at the top of it you've got Appleby Castle when you arrive at Appleby Castle you're already talking about being part of history that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. There was a building here on this site even in Roman times and what we're looking at now is the part of the property that is still occupied and it is the oldest occupied building in Cumbria dating back to the 1100s. Above me now we've got the round tower. This was built in the 1200s and it juts out so that it can protect the gate as well as look over the moat. But one of the areas of particular interest is right on the top. You've got a medieval toilet. Appleby Castle, the oldest occupied building in Cumbria. And is synonymous with Lady Anne And we're going to be talking more about her as we travel around because she was also involved in a number of other castles around the Eden Valley. Eden Valley itself is absolutely, and I mean absolutely, steeped with history of castles and battle sites and Roman settlements. And there's also a building within the Eden Valley where the father of King Arthur was supposed to have resided and we're going to be seeing that later on. So as we come back over the bridge we're going to turn left and head north because one of the first things that we're going to go and do is have a look from over 800 metres up on the second highest fell on the Pennines and that is what we're going to be riding on the top of <laughs> as it is shrouded in low cloud that should be a bit of a giggle the North Pennines the spine of England As you come out of Knock, you're going to turn right. You'll see the sign for the Christian Centre. That's the road to take. And things that you discover as you travel around. For example, the Christian Centre. 
I only found out recently there was a Christian centre here. And there it is there. The Nock Christian Centre. But we're climbing up towards the second highest hill or mountain, probably more of a hill than a mountain, on the North Pennines. And we can't see it today because of the clouds, but right up there you've got the little white golf ball that you'll see as you travel east or west on the A66. But you can also see it from the Middleton and Teesdale to Alston Road. And it's up here on Dun Fell. More known as a weather station, but believe it or not, it also helps out for air traffic control. It's also a radar station. Luckily, we can still see a lot from here. All of this in front of us now is the Eden Valley. And that's what we're going to be riding around. The hills in the far distance, they are the Howgill Fells. We can't see it today with this, but the footage I'm going to put in shortly will show you that right over there you can see the hills that surround Horswater and Ullswater. Over there you've got Ullswater. As you come along you've got Kirby Thor. Over that way there you've got Appleby. Further down across over that way you've got Kirby Stephen. There are the Howgill Fells as you go around. And as you can see from the Yorkshire Dales, which is over that way, Yep, did up, did up, did up, and eventually you end up Horswater and Ullswater over in that direction there. So let's go and get dirty with some history. The beautiful Eden Valley. To one edge, the North Pennines, to the other edge, the Howgill Fells. To the other side, the Yorkshire Dales, and to the other side to make the box, the more traditional, as we would class it, Lake District. Because the Eden Valley stretches to the west of Ullswater. The Eden Valley itself is so underexplored, yet the history, the stories, the heritage, it, it just baffles me why it's not explored more. And that is because people know the traditional Yorkshire Dales over that way, or they like to go and zoom round the Lake District, which is that way. This is overlooked and it's time it wasn't. Okay, you can't zoom about, but it's an area that you don't want to zoom about anyhow. You want to soak all of this in. Let it take your eye hostage with its sheer beauty. You can just see the village now starting to appear the village of Melmaby. Now, within Melmaby, you do have two options. There are two cafes. Now that on there, Melmaby Stores and Tea Room, that's the first one. And just across the road, and down this little ginnel, snicket, whatever you want to call it. You've got the old village bakery in there. And if I had to choose between the two, well, the old village bakery would be my choice.
it's bigger, it's better. The food is to absolutely die for, honestly. It's fabulous. And for me, before, even when the cafe at Heartside was still operating, I would still prefer to have stopped there for something to eat and drink than go up there to Heartside. Anyhow, we now head south towards Penrith. And it's where the history starts to kick in. Well, watch out for this turning here. We're going to turn right here, which takes us above Penrith. And the reason we come this way is to see the view over Penrith. Which is rather splendid. Now what you've got here, that is Penrith in the foreground there. But you couldn't see these when we were up at Dunfell earlier. The Howgill Fells comes all the way around. But in that direction there, they're the hills that surround Owls Water and Hawes Water. So Penrith really is the gateway, or one of the gateways, the other one is Kendall, the northern gateway to the Eden Valley. Because as you come off the M6 at Junction 40, turn right or left, depending upon which way you're heading, and you hit this beautiful area. And this is where we're going to be starting with the history and the heritage and the castles and the stories and the churches. So let's get started. So we're now heading into the centre of Penrith. But also, what we're going to be doing is visiting the best cafe and restaurant in my Eden Valley. Now, as we get into the centre, this is also where the train station is. But just up there, we've got Penrith Castle. Penrith Castle was built at the end of the 14th century and played a key role in the defence of the Scottish border. Contrary to what many might be expected, the castle was not built at the highest point of the hill. That lies some 170 metres away. Its location was chosen because it was probably the site of an old Roman fort, the banks and ditches of which could be conveniently reused for their defensive function. It has long been thought that Penrith Castle was built by William Strickland, later Bishop of Carlisle. But there's no direct evidence for this. And it's opposite the train station. And now we're going to be heading, hop, skipping a jump, to the rooster for a cup of tea and a sausage butty. If you're looking to get lunch here, get here for about 11.30. That's when it starts to come out and that's when it's red hot and it's fresh and it's woohoo! 
and they have a varied menu and on an evening it's steak night with your grill and they're getting a fabulous reputation for the steaks that they do because the, the owner they also own a butcher's in the centre of Penrith so he gets the best cuts of everything. Mm -hmm.